Welcome back to the channel. Today we're using a Raspberry Pi along with Solar Assistant as an inexpensive solution to monitor and control our MPP solar inverter. Stay tuned. Now before we get too far into the video between the Raspberry Pi and Solar Assistant, just want to mention that I've been hard pressed to find a really good solution for both monitoring and controlling the MPP inverter. Have to be honest here that this is probably the weakest part of the entire system. Now MPP does make their own software, it's called Watch Power, and it's fairly decent, but it's really hard to interface with. The number one issue seems to be the hardware connection. Ultimately you need some kind of laptop on site to monitor or control the inverter. Now if off-site, a lot of users have to use some kind of client to remote into those machines. Now MPP does make a Wi-Fi module, but a lot of users have had a hard time setting this up and actually getting it to work. There's nothing new in using a Raspberry Pi in a solar setup, but until Solar Assistant came along, it was fairly hard to do because you had to do your own coding and custom interface. With that set on to the setup now, I recently received a Raspberry Pi 4 as a birthday gift. I was interested in the Raspberry Pi because I knew Solar Assistant was out and really want to try this out. Again, this is the missing link to the entire system. If you're unfamiliar with Raspberry Pis, they're essentially credit card sized mini computers that run Linux. Raspberry Pis offer their traditional inputs and outputs along with a host of other features. One of the best features is the power consumption, in this case a max of 15 watts. In the current setup, I'm just running the Raspberry Pi off USB through an AC adapter. Eventually, I will run this off a direct DC connection through a small buck converter. Getting the system up and running was pretty easy to do. I purchased Solar Assistant as a direct download and flashed it to a memory card. Solar Assistant does offer a pre-configured version with a Raspberry Pi as well as other accessories. I will mention that once you get the setup going, your Raspberry Pi is completely dedicated to Solar Assistant. You won't be able to run any other programs on it. Solar Assistant offers really good guides in getting you up and running. One tip here, I used the LAN setup by plugging in an Ethernet cable. Once I did that, my network recognized the Raspberry Pi and Solar Assistant. I then connected to the Wi-Fi settings of my router and the Raspberry Pi was able to operate independently of the Ethernet connection. The final step in getting everything up and running was connecting the power supply along with a USB A to B cable from the Raspberry Pi to the inverter. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into Solar Assistant. This will just be a very broad overview. So this is a splash page that first comes up when you access your own site. We have overview, battery power, and state of charge. So on the left side of the screen, we have the inverter, solar, grid, and battery. Uh, inverter and batteries where you can click on to bring up additional screens. Also have an overview of what's happening currently for power levels. Right now our, our load is pretty low, it's 23 watts. We have 337 watts of solar coming in and 293 watts are going towards the battery. So let's go ahead and click on the battery. It's 64% state of charge. Again, there's some more details here. Watts going in, state of charge, along with the voltage and totals here. Let's go back to the dashboard, show you the inverter. Again, a nice overview of what the solar is doing, the batteries, load and grid and then the temperature of the inverter. System power, this is interesting. It's using 45 watts. Now this system power is not being included in the loads of the inverter. So I think we looked at previously, it was using 23 watts. So it's really 23 watts plus the 45 watts to run the inverter. This is for powering up the inverter along with the fans on the MPP. So back to the dashboard, let's go on and take a look at a few things. Also want to mention that I believe on the overviews, if you are monitoring the battery off the, like an RS-485 port, which is going to monitor off a BMS, you're going to see some additional data. Now where solar system really shines is in charts, and this is where you get a lot of data. Just about every reportable property that the MPP can give, um, solar Assistant is logging it for you and showing you visually how it looks. And I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the last seven days. And you can see um, basically all the colors represent what's happening in the inverter. You have red for the grid, blue is our load, and yellow is our solar. The blue lines are pretty consistent because this is where we're running our Christmas lights. And you can see here this is from night. This is basically from 3.40 in the afternoon to about 11 o'clock at night. And then sometimes we turn them on a little bit in the morning. And it just repeats itself. These red lines here are very interesting. This is where the uh, 
inverter is calling on grid power to help charge the batteries. In our configuration, we have some pretty well-used BYD batteries. Um, if they get low, the MPP has to kick in and help charge the batteries. If I zoom in, you can see this in better detail. And you can see, for example, we'll take a look at this, this uh, charging point right here from, from grid. About 11.38, the uh, inverter is calling for grid power to help charge the batteries. It's putting about 500 watts into the batteries, and it happens for about oh, for about seven minutes or so. To see that in detail is a pretty powerful thing here. So let's go back to seven-day view. Uh, just an overview. This is the top one is for how the inverter is working, and then we have battery power next going down. State of charge. You can see that's pretty low in those days. Here's the power from the utility, and this is what the battery state of charge was. It got up to about almost 12% and then it turned off the uh, grid power. So interesting to see all that. Again, if you're a data person, you wanna see this, it's a lot of stuff happening. Voltage um, from the solar arrays, current and amps, keep working our way down. What else do we have? We have PV power, battery voltage over here. I'm only running one side of the inverter for solar. What else do we have? Lots of data inverter temperature, AC voltage, you know, this is really, really, really powerful stuff. Let's continue on, totals. I like this page because it shows you over the last 30 days, a graph here, and then you can look at everything we're drawing from the load, solar PV, energy we put into the battery for charging it, what the battery discharged for kilowatts, grid use, uh, and what we export to the grid. Now, we're not exporting anything to the grid because of the permits and so forth. This, uh, the shed is designed to run off-grid or be grid-assisted, completely separate from our other net metering systems. And you can see in the last five days, we've been completely um, off-grid, not using any energy to power our Christmas lights and other loads in the shed. Let's head over to the power page now. And I'm pretty much not using these values down here because I have the uh, inverter set up to uh, certain perimeters to charge and to go off grid and to grab power from the grid when the batteries get so low. And that is actually contained in here. This is a great page because you can see everything that's happening in the inverter, all the settings, configuration. And you can run more than one inverter, which is uh, can be helpful in bigger setups. This is really extremely useful, this setting. This just mirrors what I have already programmed into the inverter. Way easier to edit here than going to the inverter and going page by page trying to figure out the settings. But uh, my batteries are pretty used and tired, and you can see where I have some of the printers set up here. So um, at 23.5 volts, uh, that's when we start calling for grid power, and that continues to happen until we hit 24.5 volts, then it disconnects from grid, then we're running completely off battery. We float to 26.7, that's a pretty useful setting. I think it's pretty good for the state of charge for the batteries, considering what shape they're in, and then we bulk charge at 27.1. I would love to have new batteries here, but this is what we have. These settings seem to work pretty well for our BYD batteries. Also, we have max charge current 60 amps and AC uh, max charge current is 20 amps. What else? Uh, miscellaneous settings, not using those. Input output settings here, it's pretty standard stuff. Let's go ahead into the configuration. This is uh, where we can configure the Raspberry Pi with all the settings, network settings. Now, obviously I have some of this blocked out just because of security, but you can choose your inverter type. You can use this just about on any Voltronic inverter. You know, obviously Voltronic makes MPP along with other inverters like Rowan and so forth. We're also connected directly from a USB cable to the Raspberry Pi. One thing I want to look at here is the battery. I'm using the inverter values to get my voltage and to monitor the battery state of charge and so forth. If you're using an RS-485 port, you have some higher end batteries where you can directly monitor off the BMS in each battery cell. Um, you can choose that instead of inverter values. That's going to give you way more data and be uh, much more useful. Someday I hope to have higher end batteries that can do that and I'll just be getting more out of this complete setup with the Raspberry Pi and the Solar Assistant. You can also use MQTT, which is a, you know, a programming protocol if you're using it with a Home Assistant. I'm not doing that right now with, uh, with our setup, but uh, there's way more features you can use with Solar Assistant and Raspberry Pi. 
if you start using these protocols. All right, so that's pretty much an overview of the Solar Assistant. This is a really, really great system. It's uh, working out really well. Love having it. I can access things on laptop, on my phone. Um, it's really easy to use and it's really stable. I haven't had any issues whatsoever since I hooked it up over a week ago. All right, so there's Solar Assistant on the Raspberry Pi, a really good solution for my setup and perhaps yours, especially if you wanna know where your voltage is, where the batteries are at, or if you're just a data person, you wanna see all the data that this inverter can put out. So definitely check out Solar Assistant, the software on their website, along with getting a Raspberry Pi. I'll leave links below in the description, both to the Raspberry Pi and Solar Assistant. It's an all-in-one solution, especially if you have a setup like ours. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. I'd be honored if you subscribe to my channel hit that like button if this video was helpful for you want to thank you for watching take care and have a great day